Hi, and welcome to another in our Over the Shoulder Solaris 11 tutorials. Today's tutorial is going to be on ZFS boot environments. Um, ZFS boot environments are a new feature of Solaris 11 which allows the user to create uh, new and separate instances of Solaris installs on their system. This could be clones of the original install or it could in fact be completely new installs on the same system. Some of the uses of this could be when a user would like to investigate a new application, they could create an environment, uh, a, a development type environment on their system, boot into that and ensure that what any, whatever they're doing on that new environment or instance doesn't affect what their main production environment may be. Uh, another real world example, uh, how we use it ourselves as a test team, we create a clean boot environment and then when we test we clone that boot environment so that anything that the testing does, uh, whether destructive, adding new software uh, or even panicking or crashing the system, that we're able to go back to a clean uh, instance to continue testing and so that the system is able to utilize as much as possible. So we'll hit back, we'll hit into the tutorial now. So we're on a system here, it's uh, x4270. Um, the main command for interacting with uh, boot environments is BEADM. So we've got a couple of subcommands there. The ones we're going to look at today will be create, uh, list, and mount. So we're going to initially have a list and see what's already on this system. So we have a number of environments. We have the important one at the moment is SNV underscore 173. So there's a couple of things that we've been told here. So the two flags here under the active column, N and R, the N denotes that it's active now, which is the N, and the R denotes that it's active on reboot. So if we were to reboot the system now without telling it to boot into something else, it would by default go into that environment. It's telling us that its mount point is on the, on the root partition, <coughs> and it's telling us that it's nearly 7 gigs in size. So what we're going to do now is we're going to create a new boot environment so that we can then boot into that and do something fairly destructive to the system and then see one of the major features of boot environments allowing us to go back to a known state. So we're going to do PEADM create um, test1. So again, now if we go back and list the boot environments, we'll see that we've just created one called test1. It's neither active now or active on reboot. It has no mount point at the moment, and it's got a very small footprint because we've actually done nothing to it yet. So what we're going to do now is we're going to boot into that boot environment. We're going to do reboot minus E, uh, which is denoting that we're going to try and reboot into a new environment. And we're going to tell us that we want to reboot into test1. Once this starts, the, the reboot process, I'm just going to pause the capture for a couple of minutes. It's not too interesting to see uh, the reboot sequence. And once I get back onto the console, we'll restart the tutorial. Welcome back. So we're just back to the point that we can log back onto the system now after its reboot. So we're going to log back in as root. So now to make sure that the change that we made, as in booting into that new boot environment, actually succeeded. So it did. So we see that we're actually now active now in test one. Uh, its size has increased a little bit. We also uh, see that if we were to reboot uh, right away again now, without giving uh, the minus E flag, that it would actually boot back into what we started with the SMB 173. So now to, to show the power of that capability, what we're going to do is we're going to get rid of some very important files on this system. We're actually going to zap the slash etc directory. We're then going to try and enable a service that will rely on some of those files. So uh, let's start doing that process. So we'll do something that no one should ever do. Because I'm root, it doesn't have a major problem with me doing it. Uh, so let's find a service that will need some of the files in the slash etc directory. So let's enable the NFS client service. Okay. Let's make 
actually tell it what we want to do with it. Test VCM enable. Straight away the system is telling us that there's a fatal error, that the ETC SVC repository isn't there, can't open it. Uh, it's given us a suggestion to try and get into system maintenance mode by going control D. <coughs> if we do that, we're even in more trouble. It's just going to cycle around. So at this stage, if we weren't in a scenario that we had a boot environment that we knew we could reboot into, we would probably have to drop the single user send control break or send break and then possibly reinstall the system. But because we know that we have something to rely, fall back on, we can do a hard uh, power reset here. So I'm actually on the SC on this console. I'm just going to reset it. Uh, so it's doing a hard reset. So I see here that the system has gone down. Just going to pause the capture again because it's going to take a little while for it to reboot because it's have to go through the BIOS, etc. And uh, once I get back onto the console, I'll resume the capture again. Just resuming the capture here now. So we've got onto our grub menu and we can see that actually SMV173 is by default selected. And that's what we would have expected uh, when we were looking at the BADM list because it would be active on reboot. So we just wait now until we get back onto the console. Then um, one of the great things that we can do now is so we know that something bad is after happening. And in a lot of cases, people would like to investigate why it actually happened. So what we're going to use now next is the BEADM mount uh, command. So we're actually going to mount the file system of the boot environment that we did that bad thing to, the test one boot environment. Then we can actually try and go into that file system and investigate possibly why the system went into such a bad state. So I'm sure you can think of ways that this would be very useful for us as a test team. It allows us to basically see the state of the system when testing happened, even though we may be only look we may be looking at the system the next day or some other time. So now we're back onto the system after the reboot sequence. Again, if we go back in and have a look at the state of the boot environments, we'll see that SNV173 is now active now again because of the reboot without um, any parameters being passed, which we couldn't anyway because we were doing a hard reset of the system. And that's also again reboot or active on reboot. Uh, test one is here. It's not active, it has no mount point, etc. So what we're going to do now is actually try and investigate why the system went into a bad state. So we're going to do BEADM mount BE name, which is test1, and we'll give it a mount point of test1 file system. So now we'll go into Have a see what we can see. So let's just guess that something bad happened in the ETC directory. And there we see, yes, everything is gone in comparison to the actual main ETC directory where we see everything that we expect. So I hope that was uh, a nice introduction to ZFS boot environments. Uh, the capabilities of it are qu quite endless. Um, but I'm sure you'll have fun playing around with it when you get a chance to use Solaris 11. Thanks for listening, and I hope that uh, you see a few more of these tutorials in the future. Bye-bye.